Actually, we have big news. Big news. This shocked, this big, shocked big basically news. Facebook and all social media out or the NBA world. Well, so, and, and, yeah. Go ahead. Thank God we have news to mm. uh, talk about. So let's out. Let's run it down. All right. So Cleveland has sent Kyrie Irving to the Boston Celtics for Isaiah Thomas, uh, Jay Crowder. Anti Zigzig, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, and also a 2018 Nets first round pick. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's unprotected. So, what do you guys think of this, this whole new trade? Because Kyrie is that lone player going to Boston, and he's going to join with Gordon Hayward, Jay Crow no, not Jay Crowder, uh, Jalen Brown, Marcus Morris, and Al Horford. And Isaiah Thomas and Jay Crowder are going to Cleveland to join LeBron James. I, I think this was actually a win-win in a sense of um, Cleveland didn't, you know, if you think about it, Kyrie requested a trade. He specified the team that he wanted to play for. So in a sense, Cleveland shouldn't have so much leverage to get a player like that back for someone that, you know, they, they technically a lot of teams are trying to avoid Kyrie because he said, I'm not willing to commit unless it's the Spurs. <laughs> and he's already requesting, you know, he's specifically trying, he was kind of like the mellow, what happened when Mello requested a trade. He specified which, where he want to go, he specified where he doesn't want to sign. So as a, as a general manager for the Cleveland Cavaliers, it's his first basically big deal because he was recently signed after uh, they let go. Yeah, Dan Gilbert, of, yeah. Of Dan, and, and to get the player like that without losing, I think Cavs, you know, had a really good deal out of this. Even though um, they lo they're losing the best player of the deal, I think they got back more than, you know, what. And that pick is so important because if LeBron leaves and if they didn't sign Isaiah, they have someone to build on to. A first round pick, which is going to be a, at least a top three or top five because the Nets are going to be garbage next year anyway. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, they're, they're getting something, you know, m more than what they could have gotten for Kyrie. I think they... That's a really yeah. good difference. On paper, it's a good deal for Cleveland Cavaliers because they're getting more value for Kyrie. Mm -hmm. uh, they can probably win for this year. And also, if LeBron leaves, which I know he will, uh, they can build for the future. Mm -hmm. If they re-sign Isaiah Thomas or they just don't re-sign him and just use the draft pick. And also, on the Boston side, Kyrie Irving, they have, Boston says they have a good chance of re-signing him. And also, they have Gordon Hayward locked up. I mean, they're pretty much, they're still a young core with uh, Jalen Brown on the come up, Gordon Hayward, and all the, all the bench players. So it's kind of a win-win situation for both teams, even though on paper it might look like Cleveland got like most of the deal. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's a surprising deal that out of nowhere he's going to Boston. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas, like he played his heart out after his tragic, you know, family, family, yeah. family it's, situation. It's rare that you'll so, get two of the top teams in the in one conference to trade, to trade. each other. Because mm. usually you're trying to outbest the other team, so you're not trying to, like, it, it, it's rare that you'll see that kind of trade happen. But it, there is an exception where you're getting this kind of deal where you, you know, um, you're try, you have assets like Boston has, and you have a superstar like Cleveland has in Kyrie. So it's rare that this, something like this would happen. It's basically like trying, like let's say a trade that happens for Golden State and Spurs, where Kawhi goes to the, like <laughs> the Warriors, and then they give up like maybe a Draymond Green back, like which is like, you know, it's not so bad over the other. It's more like you know, which one is a better fit? And I think um, I'm actually going for Boston in this, even though I did say a lot about the Cleveland, just because of the fact that um, you're not sure what's happening with Isaiah Thomas's hips. That's something that still hasn't, you know, hasn't been clearly stated yeah. what's really clear right? the risk exactly and the thing is that boston and that goes to show that boston wasn't willing to pay isaiah once he finishes this year and even though he plays as well as i don't think they're willing to pay him 34 35 million dollars a year because he's almost at the wrong side of 30 and he's too small of you know and he's a defensive li li uh, liability mm -hmm. right and so for them to get back a player of a caliber of Kyrie for two years at a salary that he has right now because when Kyrie signed his deal, it was a four or five year deal back when LeBron signed and decided to come back. Mm -hmm. So if he's on a really good deal right now for Boston. And the fact that Boston still has so many assets, and they still have Jason Tatum right there and they kept them. That's really good for uh, uh, Celtics to keep a player like Jason Tatum, right? And they get a superstar like, you know, like Kyrie. Kyrie yeah. So now they have a number one, for sure number one player 
because I don't think Gordon Hayward could be that superstar. Kind of, like, you know, you've seen him when he played against Jazz. I think he needed a superstar with him. And this is, you know, a perfect situation for him not to start the year because now he's going to play alongside, you know, a for sure superstar number one player with Kyrie. And he's going to be the second kind of Robin to him. And I think that goes well with the kind of skills that he's, the skill set that he has. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And we'll just have to see because the first game. What's the schedule? Yeah, I saw that picture. I'm too. excited the about that. The opening night game I'm on NBA that. on TNT will be the Cleveland Cavaliers and Boston Celtics facing off in the very first game for the Eastern Conference rematch. Uh, mm-hmm. And also LeBron James tweeted out when the trade happened. He gave a lot of respect to Kyrie. He, uh, and I quote, that's the only way to be the kid, special talent guy. Nothing but respect and what a ride it was for three years together. The young god, hashtag flu. The young god. <laughs> yeah, you call him the young god. So, I mean, there's no mm-hmm. no remorse between the two or from all the reports that came out between, you know, the frustrations between Kyrie, I don't want to play with LeBron. Mm-hmm. LeBron uh, want to try to beat Kyrie's, you know, behind. Yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look like there's any uh, problems between the two until October 17th when they match up for the very first time. I like so how it's going to be there. pretty exciting. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a good, it's a good win-win situation for both teams, but I still can't wait for the NBA season to start. It's All right, so call soon. It, call it. Call it before we have to go to this to the, to the break. Cleveland or Boston for that uh, the opening, opening game? <laughs> Cleveland. I'm going to call it Cleveland, yeah. I'm going to call Cleveland still. Really? I'll go Boston. <laughs> I mean, Boston, yeah.